first became aware of the Sable Trail pipeline three years ago when survey markers showed up on the northern Withlacoochee River near my home. The route at that time was slated to go directly through what we call Power Line Spring. My husband, Chris, he's right over there. Uh, Chris and I were alarmed and began educating ourselves about Sable Trail. We wanted Sable Trail gone from our small neighborhood. We went to FERC scoping meetings, water management meetings, and county commission meetings. We met with U.S. Representative Ted Lewis, constituent advocate, and later my husband Chris met with Ted Yoho in person. We made a video highlighting the 11 springs that could be impacted by that, that river crossing. Chris invited people from FERC, Sable Trail, and their consulting geologist to make a site visit and see for themselves what was going on. A small group of property owners hired an independent geologist named David Brown to do a, ge a geological survey independently of the river crossing site. We initiated a petition and submitted it to FERC and to Ted Yoho. It was a very exhausting process. But eventually, the route was moved off the northern Withlacoochee River. It's still going under that river in Georgia, and it's still going under the Withlacoochee South. So you can imagine we were very relieved. But as time went by, I came to realize that even though we got the route moved for very appropriate reasons, that just put it in somebody else's backyard. From the time that we learned about Sable Trail, it was always slated to go under the Suwannee River. When they rerouted it away from the Withlacoochee near our home, it got moved to an area of the Suwannee River that is almost as geologically sensitive as the previous route on the Withlacoochee. That's when Chris and I took the stand that there is no good route for this pipeline and it should be stopped. When Chris happened to see a notice in our little tiny local newspaper, the Jasper News, that the Florida Department of Environmental Protection intended to grant an environmental resource permit and permission to use sovereign submerged lands, I felt compelled to fight it. So I wrote a, I wrote a petition to DEP to oppose the permit. With a lot of help from my husband Chris Miracle, Gretchen Quarterman, and especially John Quarterman, the Swanee Riverkeeper now. Our small group, Walls Watershed Coalition, was granted an administrative hearing. One thing that I was trying to do with my petition to DEP was to be an advocate for the earth, the water, and the plants and animals that are being impacted by this pipeline. What I learned is that in an administrative hearing, you're not allowed to advocate for the earth or the wild things. The only thing that matters to the court is if a human being is being impacted directly. I believe it is wrong to only take into consideration impacts to people. We lost our case. We didn't have enough members of WALS testify who were directly impacted by the pipeline. In other words, people whose property the pipeline would actually cross. One of Chris and my main arguments against this pipeline is that it is being installed in the most geologically sensitive area they could possibly put it here in Florida. It is routed through the Springs heartland. It is routed through an area of porous limestone where the Floridan aquifer is unconfined. The Floridan aquifer is the main source of drinking water for millions of people in Florida and Georgia. 
They are crossing the pipe over underground spring conduits, such as the Falmouth Cathedral Cave, which is known by cave divers around the world as one of the longest mapped cave systems. Dye tests have been done that show there are many spring conduits in the Suwannee River crossing area that are interconnected. Their pipe could intersect or cause collapse of these cave systems, risking our springs and our rivers. Sable Trail's documents contained false information about the proximity of sinkholes to the pipeline route at the Suwannee River crossing. Their list of first magnitude springs that they gave to the permitting agencies omitted the closest two first magnitude springs, Lime Run Springs and Falmouth Springs. We reported these omissions and falsehoods to FERC, DEP, Army Corps, and we requested a site visit, but all to no avail. We led hikes for public officials to see for themselves but in the end, Sable Trail, DEP, Army Corps, and FERC just patted us on the head and said, don't worry, nothing is likely to happen. And if it does, there are plans to mitigate it. But really, how do you mitigate the collapse of a spring conduit? How do you mitigate an explosion, especially under a river? I am a fifth generation native Floridian. So not as many as Bobby, I'm sure. And I have witnessed massive human growth in Florida. I have witnessed the construction of interstate highways, Disney World, and continuing urban sprawl. It's very disheartening to me. I am told that Sable Trail is being built because the Florida Public Service Commission requested that the power companies increase their capacity to meet the future energy demands of Florida's growing population. But nobody asked us Floridians if we wanted Sable Trail, and we don't. Floridians want to protect our environment and our resources. In 2014, Floridians overwhelmingly voted and passed the Water and Legacy Amendment to use taxpayer money to purchase wild lands and not allow their development, and to protect our water. More recently, Floridians voted down the utility-backed um, solar amendment. The construction of Sable Trail, as you've heard several people say, will perpetuate our dependence on fossil fuels when we are ready to move to renewable energy. The Sable Trail pipeline to me is wrong on many levels. The methane gas that it will supply is obtained by the dirty process of fracking. It is wrong for Floridians to benefit from the energy the gas will provide at the expense of those people whose water supplies are contaminated because they live near fracking sites. It is wrong that the pipeline is endangering the water and safety of people and living things in Alabama, Georgia, North Florida, who will get no benefit whatsoever from the pipeline. It is wrong that private property is being taken by eminent domain for the profits of corporations. Those citizens now have property that they can't use as they see fit and property that is devalued. It is wrong that the laws in place make Sable Trail's environmental destruction legal. It is wrong that DEP reassures us that their mitigation plans will make Sable Trail safe. But when Sable Trail contractors fail to use the proper processes or when accidents occur, no one is keeping an eye on it only private citizens, and we are usually ignored or dismissed. So I want to thank each and every one of you for coming and for taking your time to oppose this pipeline and for standing up for our earth. 
it takes people like you who are willing to step up to the plate to bring about change and make things happen. I understand that Sable Trail pipeline construction is near completion. If we can stop it, that would be very awesome. If we can't, at least people are letting it be know, known in a very big way that we are tired of our environment being sacrificed for profit. The more people, who, the more people who speak up, the better we are heard by the powerful decision makers. And I want to quote my friend um, Deborah Johnson, who's not here, but she said that she would rather die trying than to never have tried, and that's kind of how I feel about it.